Welcome to Thriver Talks with Stephanie and Nally. I'm Nally. And I'm Stephanie. And today is episode 22 with tips to thrive during COVID-19. Right now is a really scary and uncertain time, not just for cancer thrivers, but for every single person around the world. So today we wanted to share with you what we're personally doing to keep our immune systems boosted, things we're doing to pass the time, and also give you some tips on how to overcome fear and anxiety and with the hopes that you'll have a little bit of relief during this crazy time. Yeah, because I really believe that as cancer thrivers are experts at self-quarantining and self-isolating and boosting our immune system, so it's worth the listen. Without further ado, this is true. Here is episode 22. Hey, girl. Hey. Hey. So how many days? I think I started self-quarantining a little bit before you because... Did you? think so because this is what's crazy is that when we were at Miami when we were in Miami at Miami Breast um it was like New Rochelle which is the town that I moved to from Los Angeles because my partner Mark lives here and it was like all over the headlines like the hot spot was in New Rochelle and I had to fly back here so that was really random and crazy it's like of all places but um So literally, I've been self-quarantined as soon as I got back from Miami Miami. Breast. Which is smart because technically once you travel, you should be self-quarantining for two weeks. Exactly. And being that, you know, there were so many cases in our neighborhood, I was not taking the risk. So I've been inside since we got back from Miami. (laughs) Yeah. Well, you were going to a couple of like like appointments here and there, if I'm not mistaken. But, like, when have you literally just started to just stay home and not go anywhere? I think I had Dr. Wong Yeah. um, when I got back. And as soon as I saw Dr. Wong, I've been inside, like, literally inside. And um, even now, my upcoming appointments with doctors, I don't know what I'm going to do about treatment, per se, but a lot of the appointments are going to now be via, you know, online portal. So... It's just Which interesting times. Pretty good. It's pretty smart. Um, yeah. I'm looking at the calendar. You're absolutely right. Like, I remember coming home from Miami and being utterly exhausted anyway because I had just delivered, like, the biggest talk of my life. Yes. And just traveling has been exhausting anyway. So I pretty much stayed home besides from seeing one of my best friends one night. But I've also been – this is probably my – hold on. It's since it like Friday. week two? It's week two. We did one, so seven, eight, nine. Uh, this is my 10th day of just being inside, not doing probably, it. <laughs> probably the same. Yeah. And you know what's crazy is that Nally was supposed to come. You were supposed to come visit me in yeah. New York. Like, And as soon as all of this happened, you had to cancel your flight, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I'm sure everyone listening or watching can relate to all of this because I think it's so interesting that – We are all equally affected by this, you know, um, in in a sense of having to stay inside and the Mm -hmm. uncertainty. Yes. And I I feel like as someone who's been on a cancer journey for almost a decade and you for six years, um, it's almost like we kind of live in this space of uncertainty on the daily. All the time. And this is just like an extra layer of uncertainty. So I think not like this is like being boastful, but I think through our experiences, we're kind of like more prepared to deal with, like you said, like the self-quarantining, the social distancing, all of the things that we self-care. Absolutely. Yeah. Don't you find it funny? Like I've stumbled upon so many memes where it's like that moment you realize that. social distancing and self-quarantining is your day-to-day lifestyle and I was like <laughs> damn it yeah <laughs> this like, is not true. a lot changed <laughs> aside from like the events um that we'd go to or um conferences and speeches and mostly 
travel but thankfully like we made it to miami and by the time we got back it was like things started getting really bad as soon as we got back but aside from that when it comes to our day-to-day when we're not traveling and we're not doing conferences and so on and so forth we're pretty much home doing what we always do which is this podcasting and writing so not much has changed in our life right i mean we're fortunate enough given our circumstances yeah. that we get to work from home. Um, yeah, so not a lot has changed, but definitely in addition to that extra layer of having, you know, with the uncertainty, I think I've, I know you have too, we've like taken the initiative to really try to boost our immune system um, like next level, Yeah, which I do find too, interestingly enough, something that has changed for me is, I'm becoming really regimented with my self-care, like even working from home and not, you know, having to be at an office job every day, kind of like stuff falls through the cracks. And now during this time, it's like self-care has been my number one priority. And it's almost been like a silver lining because I'm doing things that I've been putting off for a really long time. Yeah, it's like forcing us to to Mm -hmm. heal. And I feel like that's just another big analogy to what's happening for everybody. It's forcing everyone to take that much needed break that the world so desperately was craving and needed to heal. And even just, I feel like our, where our society was headed, especially with just technology and, you know, the hustle and bustle is, has Mm -hmm. become the Western norm where we don't stop. Exactly. It's, and we don't, you guys barely even get like paid vacation in, in the States and Crazy. even here in Canada. Yes. Okay. We get two weeks. Like I know that Europe gets like six weeks right off the bat yeah. for their jobs, Crazy. but like, it's almost like a big, like, it's almost, it's almost like a gift. It's like, okay, everybody here's mm-hmm. your moment to heal. And I hope that's how the world is receiving it because there's so much that we can't control again something that us cancer thrivers are quite used to things that we can't control very well versed (laughs) (laughs) indeed but there is during this time a lot that we can and I hope that everyone sees it as a moment to take a step back and heal absolutely I think little things too I've noticed around the house is obviously going out and shopping I've been doing like everything online but like you don't want to waste any piece of food. We're like, nope, we're not wasting any food. You better cut that paper towel in half. Yes. You know, like, and these are things that we should be doing anyway. Anyway. It's almost like we, we become all of us, you know, I'm guilty, but just like, we just expect that our resources are unlimited and they're not. And, um, you know, this should be a way of living for everybody. We shouldn't just thoroughly wash our hands because of a virus. We should thoroughly wash our hands always we should change our clothes when we come home and put on indoor clothes and keep our outdoor clothes in the laundry and be rational, you know, ration food and be mindful of the resources that we're just throwing away every day. I go through paper towels, I must admit, like a bad habit. And now I'm just like, okay, they're like gold, you know, but True. so there's all these like little silver linings in all of this and just True. teaching us like better ways to live and not to abuse that or take for granted all of the resources that and, and I love that you mentioned that because not only are, should we not take advantage of the resources that the um, earth provides but also we should not take advantage of um, our bodies I feel like it's also Absolutely. a big wake-up call where suddenly we realize that we're all vulnerable to this you know and how exactly. we're, we are all connected and we're all a global community and you know there's yes. no, no borders can really separate us from this virus and um, I feel like it's just another realization where a lot of us live our lives thinking that we're invincible and even though it's more dangerous to the elderly and those with pre-existing conditions like us (laughs) by the way um, still it's like even if you get it you could spread it and it's it's our responsibility and our duty as humanity right to keep ourselves safe like every time one person dies that's like that's on all of us yeah stay inside like I think that's been really frustrating for me is like you know I get it same in our household you know like finances are you know it's like everyone's money has come to a halt and but 
not that it makes it any better, but we're all going through the same situation. And there's n absolutely no reason to go outside right now unless it's like absolutely mandatory for, mm -hmm. you know, what they're saying, like prescriptions or a mandate, you know, a doctor visit that you can't do remotely. Um, so it's been really frustrating to see people outside. Yeah. And I know it's hard, but it's like, like everyone needs to stay home right now. And I, yeah, I think that we should take advantage of the start of this podcast as we're just 10 minutes in to really give this PSA. I think it's our also our responsibility of, as people with platforms to spread this word because it's crazy to see how not how people don't just don't get it there. They're just like, oh, yeah. it doesn't affect me. It doesn't affect me. So maybe what, what do you know of the coronavirus? So. Right. Well, I think so. You know, I'm from California, yeah. very much still a Cali girl, but now I'm in New York. And I must say, I love our mayor, Cuomo, but he said it best yesterday when he gave a press release. He's like, if you're out in the streets, you're arrogant. Yep. You know, he's like, there's absolutely no reason why you should be in the street. You're selfish and arrogant. And I was, that really resonated with Boom. me because that's how I feel. It's, it's like, true. you know, um, you know, you're no better than the next person. Like, I think this comes to like, no one has an entitlement. We're all equal. And we really need to collectively as a whole for each other stay inside right now. And a lot of people don't realize that, like you said, you know, it, this kind of goes with, you know, having NBC like we look normal. So no one would ever guess what we've been through or the diagnosis we had. But it's like the same with um, the COVID, you know, 19, like people think, oh, it's just elderly people are immune compromised. But like we are immune compromised, but the average person wouldn't see us as such. Exactly. So just being mindful of, you know, just having respect for each other right now. And the greatest way you can express that respect is to stay, stay inside. Home. Yes. Yes. And we know that that's not easy. Um, you know, you get restless cabin fever. I think, we're really blessed that we have a home where we set up, like I have the top floor and Mark has the studio in the basement. So we have like our separate spaces, but mm -hmm. I can't imagine being in like an apartment in New York city crammed up with the family. That must be really difficult mm -hmm. or having young children home from school. And you know, that also must be difficult and stuff that we can't relate to. So we're not like minimizing any not of those things, but you have to, whatever your situation is right now, find ways to make it work for you exactly I, I also love how another um thing that's going viral on social media is like our grandparents had to go to war to fight for the world and our country all you have to do is sit on your couch and stay home yeah like, do it and then even to see these healthcare. Uh, practitioners and all the nurses and those who um, work at groceries and everyone in service it's like they are risking their lives to serve us and they are staying at work when obviously they wish they could stay at home and all you need to do to help these healthcare practitioners so that these hospitals don't um, overload and lose their resources and have not to have enough space and not have enough hospital beds to save lives all we're at, they're asking us to do is stay home so you can prevent the spread. And that's the idea is so that these hospitals don't get overwhelmed, right? Exactly. And like you said, you know, one thing I really didn't even realize last night is these healthcare workers and practitioners are sleeping outside of their homes because they've been exposed to it and they can't yeah. bring it home they to their can. families. So they're making so much sacrifice. They're really on the front line and it's like out of respect for them, like stay home. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess that kind of brings us to our first point we were going to talk about are like things you can do or things that we've been doing and mm -hmm. maybe they can inspire you at home to, um, to do. So what are like a few things that you're doing as your new ritual during quarantine. Exactly. Well, I think the first step would be to flip your mindset because if you constantly tell yourself, oh my God, oh my gosh, this sucks, this is boring, oh, it's unfortunate, I can't go to my concert, I can't go to this birthday party, I can't go to that birthday party, the first thing you need to do is stop that <laughs> because yeah, otherwise exactly. you're not going to be able to follow all these tips that we're going exactly. to give you right now. So 
first of all, sit down, forgive your thoughts and like let it out. You know, yes, this this freaking sucks. We know it. We're all sacrificing so much. There's brides that I know who've canceled, you know, their weddings. There are people who and weren't able to go to funerals, funerals were put on hold. So your you concert know, or can't have yeah, your concert, your graduation, all those things like that do indeed suck. Like you have to let it out, forgive that and know that, you know, okay, this is temporary and um yeah you you have to be grateful for what you do have right and that is exactly. a lot of people don't have a roof over their head or a fridge full of food or families to even self quarantine with um so try to put yourself in a state of gratitude to then start these tips that we're going to give you and for me it's like <laughs> i think stuff <laughs> you're going to be like Ugh finally because i'm non-stop right i i always yes. like to do 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 and um it's one event to the other one project to another um so i feel like this is a time to relax and yes. take care of yourself so you know i, I want to keep it super simple i've just been sleeping a lot more good <laughs> i always am on her can you just sleep please like your body heals when you sleep like so I actually have sleep, like the better. nap time scheduled in my Thank schedule, God. and and see she scheduled it. Her nap time is scheduled into her planner, <laughs> so I sleep a lot more, <laughs> which is I think is also um, a big point in um, boosting your immune system. Is that your immune system requires at least like a good eight hours of sleep in order for your body to regenerate and for your blood cells to thrive so sleep is a big one yes sleep I've been like on I've been having so much fun I must I've been talking to me in two weeks and maybe my attitude will be different but I've been having so much fun like okay what's mostly fun what you've been doing so like in the morning I've been doing my yoga with Adrian which you yeah. put me on to the home 30-day challenge so nice. I think I'm on day five today okay um and then I've been meditating, which yeah. is something that I've always wanted to be more consistent with. So I'm taking this time to be more consistent um, with my meditation practice. Um, I've been rebounding. I had like a little trampoline in the backyard yes. and, you know, it's just been sitting there. And, um, you know, if you've been watching the Radical Remission docuseries, but, you know, jumping on the trampoline is not only cardio, but it also activates your lymphatic system and flushes out all the toxins from your body. Really great for anyone going through cancer mm -hmm. treatments. Um, and my biggest project, which I'm like really excited about is gardening. So when I moved into this house, it's really old. I think this house was built in like 1865 Wow. and it's pretty big. You've seen, it's like a, like four stories, but it needed a lot of love when I moved in. So I've been really focusing on that inside and now I can focus on the outside so I've been digging up all of the weeds in the backyard and making beds to grow vegetables in so I've been gardening um reading listening to my audiobooks really going taking a really deep dive into spirituality mm -hmm. um watercolors I've been painting <laughs> yeah. can we see have you started do you have some artwork to show us? I, it's in the other room. It might be. Yeah, it's very abstract. Some of it's abstract. I did some flowers, but um, nice. Look at you. I just, um, I just, just trying to opening up my creativity, and and the um, I've been doing a lot of concoctions and immunity stuff, which we'll talk about in our next yeah tip. But just. As far as activities, I've just been keeping really busy, and yeah. I've been self-quarantining from the boys, mostly downstairs. We've had some interaction, but, yeah, um, you know, so I've kind of just been up in my my top floor, like, doing all this Doing what stuff. you've been wanting to do for so yeah, long. Yes, exactly. That's and I'm great. so happy. Like, I've, I'm really, yeah. like, enjoying it, so. Yeah, same. It's, it's almost like permission, like, to relax exactly permission like I'm also as much shit as I talk to I'm very like I don't stop uh, right way more than me by the way <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt before but you I know. 
are way worse than me you, and you still don't stop like where do you even have time to watercolor <laughs> which is I, I know <laughs> and I had all this stuff so it's all stuff that I obviously wanted to do you know so yeah. I, I just brought it out the archives and I've just been doing stuff that I've been wanting to do so just finding and and maybe some suggestions to people you don't have to paint or you know no, be a weirdo true. like me or but no that's you know, great all these unfinished projects, like it's springtime. The first day of spring was what, March 19th, a couple of days ago. Like purge, get rid of like, That's clean your did. home. That's what I did this weekend. I, um, I cleaned. <laughs> I've been cleaning everything, everything that you never have time to clean. Like, you know, those like <laughs> um, I have this, um, what's the word in English? Uh, drawer underneath my um, television. How do you say it in French? <laughs> <laughs> under my tv and um you know you never open those damn drawers and like do a little clean up and i just found a bunch of albums and stuff that like i haven't touched in years and i dusted them i did a whole cleanup of my pantry which i want to redo and get like some storage bins but like cleaning the spring cleaning now is the time yes because yeah. it's so important to keep everything clean and disinfected at the moment but also like when else do you have time to spring clean amidst your busy work schedules and, and life so that's another thing and I find cleaning can be really like meditative as well I love like listening Absolutely. to a very long podcast and just getting lost in the podcast and cleaning so I feel like I'm the boring one who's like I've just been sleeping and cleaning <laughs> That's totally fine. But you know, I like, feel like it's because that's what the the stuff that I haven't had the time to do because I'm constantly creating and as opposed exactly. to, you know, someone who does so many like how, like chores and stuff at all times. Like I'm always like, ah, this project, that project, this deadline, that deadline, because this company wants me to create this for them. So now is my time to just actually you know just do the Chill. things that I have never been able to do and I think that's the main tip it's like instead of seeing this as a time of like oh my god I'm a prisoner and I I can't I can't do this I can't do that think of all the things that you can finally do and that sure. you've been putting aside and that you've been procrastinating about or anything that you've always wanted to try like I know I'm teasing you about your your watercolors but like it's true it's like when do you ever get time to paint so pick up a new hobby or get back to an old hobby. Um, there's so many things to do. And one thing my dad always told me as a kid, because I used to, you know, as a kid, every kid's like, dad, I'm bored. Mom, I'm bored. My dad said, never use that word again, because only boring people get bored and you're not bored. Oh, I love that. And it's true. Oh, only that. boring people get bored. Yeah. When it's you true. think of it, because you could come up with a hundred and one things to do, like at home. It's in true, place. and and I want to address, you know, because maybe we can't relate to the little kids running around, I and there might be moms watching too. this, like, yeah, right, like, I yeah, really wish like I'm the freaking watercolor, okay, like, whole story, <laughs> but you know. I, I from speaking to my friends who have little kids, it's like they're like, oh my god, it's only like day three, and I want to shoot myself. I know, but I love the the also the thing that's going viral right now too is like all teachers should be paid a million dollars a Thank month. You. you know, I was a teacher, <laughs> You're a teacher right? Teacher, yeah. Prior to getting sick, so I always said that we're like the most. It's such a tragedy. Like we're responsible for the future, and we get paid like you Minimal. have to have a second job basically to like so live off the teacher income. So. Hence why I was working two jobs right before I got diagnosed, which probably didn't help my situation. Right. Anyway, I digress. But <laughs> like my friends who I've been talking about with who have kids, it's like, but remember you said you wish you had more time with your kids. There you go. Like, yes. like you were wishing for this time because you were so busy with work that you wanted to spend more time with the kids to watch them grow. And it's like, I, can't imagine what it's like to have one child, two, three little ones running around the house. It's probably making you crazy, but I don't know, maybe like find a way to shift your perspective. And, you know, these yeah. are times that, you know, you'll never get back with your children. So, so to true. value this time, even though it's maybe driving you crazy, 
It's so true. It's, I mean, I have like uh, godchildren and a niece and soon a nephew and they grow so fast. Like it's crazy. True. So that's a great point to even just see this like um, as a moment to watch your, your children grow and be with them be more because, you know, things are going to things change so fast every day. Um, and as a teacher. Yes, I think that it's important if you have children at home to still have a schedule. I was just gonna say that too. It's so funny. You're I'm gonna go back for it. Yeah, like you're gonna go. These children are gonna go back to school eventually, but they need to still be in the practice of waking up at a certain time, mm-hmm. showering to get the day started. Maybe you know it doesn't have to be school hours, but I do think that there needs to be a time that homework or schoolwork is done from this time to this time. Yeah. Still need structure. It's not spring break for, you know, however long this is going to last for. But it's important for them, too, as they're, you know, still growing and learning. I I just, I was looking for it, but I found, um, it's because I have a family group chat and for my Mm -hmm. aunts and uncles, too, who have kids. And my dad found a really good schedule. And, um, you know, I love that. Will you send me? Yeah. (laughs) As a stepmom, you may need this. Um, Yes. But it's a really, really good great schedule that has time for the kids um lots of um time for um no screen time which is also very important because it's so easy for these kids to you know watch tv be on their ipads all day um but yeah i i I sent it to tasha who's a triple negative driver that one Uh, and she was like oh my gosh this is so brilliant she's been following it it was really helpful to her so um maybe we could share that schedule but on top of kids having schedules you were laughing about me having a nap schedule, <laughs> but I think during this self quarantine time, it's important for us adults and those who don't have kids oh, yeah. to have work. If you're working from home, especially, it helps to have a work schedule. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, exactly. I was just saying, like, because you are, we both are hot on ourselves. Like, just like chill. Both of us, you know. Yeah. Like, I, I think I've embraced that. Like. Now I'm like, oh, you know, it's kind of opposite. Like you're always creating and I'm always trying to make this household function (laughs) and trying to create and work. So now it's like, oh, I could like stay upstairs and not have to go downstairs and take care of me. Um, So anyway, so just that. And I think just one more thing as a teacher, I think that teachers are relying on the parents to really step up to the plate right now, too, because, you know, to keep them on track with their lesson plans and everything that they're learning. Um, and I think too, another important thing you said was limiting screen time. I think as adults, we need to do that right now too, oh because if you're God. watching the news 24 seven, which it's hard not to do right now because it's just like this crazy story that almost seems like a sci-fi movie, but it's not, and it's unfolding and you just yeah. want to keep up with what's going on. But just, take time to remove ourselves from that because it's just not healthy to be in that headspace all day long. Right. Exactly. I see a lot of people who I see a lot of people. I see my family do it. Like they're working. My dad has like two screens and one of the screens is like the news playing at all times of the day. And often Mm -hmm. a lot of families have their TVs on and it's the news that's constantly on with new breaking news every single second of the day shut it off because that is going to unconsciously just add anxiety again it's about shutting off what you can't control you can't control unfortunately all the the lives that are are passing in in italy at the moment Mm -hmm. it's very devastating it's tragic um but us as individuals we can't do anything about italy but it's hard we you know we can only pray and stay home to prevent the spread but yes. to have that constantly in your face at all times like oh my like gosh another sub- death another death it's like <gasps> even if you're just hearing it yeah. it's like subconsciously affecting you so we all know the news repeats the same stories over and over again so pick your news time slot you're yeah not gonna really stay you'll informed. be caught up on everything stay informed and i, I exactly. like i prefer going on you know websites like the official COVID-19 um, updates, whether it's uh, the WHO, the WHO organization, mm-hmm. or um, just even just like your local news from just updates from time to time. But like, don't keep it on in the background at all times. And yes. same goes for social media. It's like, 
I personally haven't been posting as much because if I have my phone in my hand, it's like constant. It just pops up. It's like so hard yeah, to escape, can't. you know, even as a creator who would like to put out inspiring, more positive content for you. It's like it's nonstop, just like news, negative news, anxiety. A lot of people mm -hmm. project their fear. Um, thankfully, I feel like we've built such a great community that a lot of people post more like, you know, positive, yes. spiritual yes, stuff. Yes, uplifting. Uplifting, mm -hmm. very uplifting. So, yes, it's great. But, again, it's hard to escape that random post of, like, there's no more food at the groceries. And, like, oh, my gosh, I have so much anxiety because someone came close to me today. And, ah, like, just that panic is yeah. um, all up in my feed, too. Yeah, I've definitely been detoxing from social. social although like you said there are some really great like you know we love our Chris Carr and yeah. Gabby Bernstein and people leading like meditations yes. which are great um and uh D Nice has been having yes um, at it's at D Nice N-I-C-E he's a old old school hip-hop producer dj but he's been doing these like global parties at night which it's are so cool if you want to tune in and like dance and good vibes and so there are just be selective about what you tune into basically yeah and um right, right now the world's also being so generous again silver lining mm -hmm. so like d nice he's every night for free coming on ig live and giving like a free party for the Concert. world to tune, tune yeah. into literally for, like, six seven hours yeah and like you have so it's just, it's fun just to keep it on too and like to see like Usher, Oprah, Michelle Obama, Everybody. Mark Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg like yeah, every George single. Clinton, Stevie Wonder, Janet Jackson. I was really excited yeah, about Janet. Yeah, exactly. Any like, Every celebrity, big person you can imagine is in that party. So that like uplifted my spirits yeah, immediately. And the time. tunes are amazing. He plays like a lot of old school gems. But also yeah. a lot of your, like my yoga studio, Moto Yoga Griffin yeah. Town, um, where I do the Kundalini yoga that a lot of you, because I speak so much about it on social media, a lot of you are like, oh, I wish, I wish I could do Kundalini with you because they do a lot of fire breath and breath work. So she does that for free um, every Friday, wow. 10 a.m. Can I tune in? Absolutely. So, absolutely and it's like yeah, a whole, it's a global that. community now and Amazing. a lot of people are doing um free trainings free meditation um even hay yoga. house put everything at 50 percent off, off on their website for um, yeah. spiritual books and audio meditations and audio books um so there's so much that that's going on right now so many resources you. like from home all stuff that we could do yeah absolutely um how have you well how do you feel like yes we we say we're experts and you say you're having so much fun right now but has COVID-19 caused extra anxiety and fear at all oh absolutely so yeah. I hope I don't sound like delusional by like oh I'm having so much fun <laughs> I'm painting I'm just saying I'm, and I'm creating <laughs> I'm painting no so I hope I didn't come across like no. that I'm creating fun given my fear and anxiety. Like, Which is what we're really so, good at. <laughs> yeah, like I'm definitely, um, we're immune compromised. I'm fearful of going into the city to get my treatment. I'm in the midst of making some big decisions around my treatment plan right now. So it's kind of like weird timing for all of that. Um, you know, I have a stepson who travels to different homes and is exposed to different things. So that's why I've kind of self-quarantined. Um, but yeah, like, of course, I feel like I'm always an optimist, but I also think we need to be real and know that, like, this thing's not going to just stop dead in its tracks. Mm -mm. It has to play itself out. So I, I believe, and again, I'm no expert, but this is just my opinion, is I think it's going to get worse before it gets better. And I feel like we're kind of just entering what's about to happen yep. um so I think I'm doing things to distract and take away from my fear but yeah I'm I'm fearful of my loved ones my mom and dad being across the country um you know and not being able to see them and checking on them every day and making sure they have food and and they're safe and, and 
so that really has been wearing at my heart a lot, like my parents being so far and my immune system and not wanting to really come into contact with anyone. And I think really the biggest trigger is of all freaking places in the country, New I had to move to New Rochelle, <laughs> which is like the heart of it all. It's like, what are the freaking chances? But um, yeah, so there is, there is total fear and anxiety. Like I'm not just some delusional hopping through fields of flowers while there's a crisis <laughs> going on around me, you know, but I'm creating things that are distracting me and bringing me back to peace, back to love, back to trusting. Um, you know, and like you said, I do think that this is a time for a shift is happening. Absolutely. I mm-hmm. think that, um, people need to awaken. I feel like mother earth is like putting her oxygen mask on first and, Crazy. you know, like we're being forced to really go within, to look at our shadows, to, um, to heal, like not just cancer, like everyone Everything. is being forced to heal. So yeah, but with that comes tons of fear and anxiety, but I'm just finding ways to, to, you know, to put that to the side and trust in God and the bigger plan and that this too shall pass. And I really do believe that, but I think we need to be very mindful and take the right steps to make sure that we're, we and our loved ones are protected. Yeah. And I I think that's why if you are living in fear and you are worried about just where the world is headed it's totally normal. It's it's something that I think we're all experiencing as a global community. And for me too, I think the reason why I have just been, you know, sleeping more, cleaning, doing a little bit more, less getting a little less creative because I'm creative 24/7 in my regular <laughs> lifestyle is because I feel like I could feel the energy is right now is just really heavy. Um, yes, absolutely. And there's something in the air. This, like, I, of course, I'm, we're blessed with this time to, you know, even write the Thrivers Guide, which is something else that we are doing, yes. and like yes. again, some a blessing in disguise because the only thing that's always been stopping us from writing is because we get invited to Miami, and when we do this, and we have this event, and um, so now it forces us to stay quarantined and hibernate and just write. But it, even that has been hard to get into that mind space because of this heavy energy that I'm sure every single person listening right now feels because it's Course. insane that as as beautiful as it is for us to all realize that we're all connected and we're all in this together. Like, I feel like every single human being in the world right now is feeling that stress and that fear and that anxiety and it's like it's like in the air energy is energy right we feel it worldwide so there is I feel like there is this heavy like uh, something in the air that I can't quite put into words but yeah yeah Yeah, it's that it's it's there it's just like kind of like this black cloud right now over all of us you Mm -hmm. know and and that's why we need to more than ever find things to keep our minds occupied and in a healthy space. Yeah, because you're responsible distant. of your energy too. Whatever you're exactly. projecting out there, whatever it is I'm feeling in the air, it's like we can all do our part to remain calm and remain just yeah, less less anxious, more present and focusing on that. Exactly. You know, being finding joy like Stephanie doing everything as she is running through the fields rebounding painting <laughs> do I sound crazy not at all kind it's, it's okay. all to say it's a great and, and to be honest <laughs> I too I'm just, I just let you talk and because everything you say I feel like I could just say all over again because we have the same life um yes. but I too I'm like doing all my yoga exercising um even V has gotten into like our home workouts and stuff. So it's been, it's crazy to say it's been quite fun and like we're doing everything yeah. we love to do anyway, just at home. But um, no, I'll just say like we, we, we do feel that fear. Right. And I think like as of anything in life, like we can't control like what happens, but we mm-hmm. can control how we respond. And this is when we really need to be responsible and how we're responding for our own mental health and wellness mm-hmm. and staying home. And so I think also, aside from finding things that have been keeping us occupied, have you been adding any 
other healing regimens like supplementing or what have you been doing to boost your immune system? Absolutely. So I had already mentioned more sleep, which is huge. But Huge. then just I uh, increased my my take on supplements and maybe we could show them what we do religiously. Yes. yes. So So one of our you go. Take No go it. One of our no, you you put me onto this, so you I tell. did put I totally you forgot did. about you that. Put me onto this. So, so okay. Lipospheric vitamin C. Obviously, everyone's big on vitamin C. As soon as you get a cough or any type of virus, you want to like increase your vitamin C. But ideally, you're supposed to do it as a preventative matter. Like even uh, my acupuncturist was saying, like the people, like it's not when you get sick that you take vitamin C. It's like now. It's you do it for prevention to boost your immunity. However, um, your average type of vitamin C, I think the I might be getting the numbers wrong but like 80 percent of it doesn't really reach it a cellular cellular level because it um gets broken down in the digestive system because of all the acidity and so like on the so pills forth. and the powders like pills powders but even your vitamin form. c that you get in your diet so even when right. you eat an orange or you eat your yellow fruits uh, uh, well yellow fruits and vegetables yeah you think that you're getting vitamin c but the vitamin c actually doesn't make it into your bloodstream and on a cellular level level where you would need it the most in order to increase your white blood cells or increase your immunity because of your digestive system so live on labs created lipospheric vitamin c and because of the liposomes it encapsulates the vitamin c and protects it protects it throughout your digestive system so that it really goes directly into your bloodstream and you are absorbing it like a hundred percent capacity yeah. mm-hmm. yes so even a lot of people do vitamin C in, um, intravenously. A lot of cancer yes. thrivers have done that as an alternative therapy. Um, this lipospheric vitamin C, I, I feel like it's like right under, obviously not the same effect as intravenous vitamin C, but it's probably the second best. Like the next best thing you can do. And thing. obviously from your home. Exactly. So we've been taking this. Twice a day now. I usually yeah, take one, one, but with everything going on, doubling up. So you kind of take it like a shot. So we thought we'd do it together. Yeah, right? we thought we'd like cheers, <laughs> have a, instead of tequila shots, we would show you what lipospheric vitamin C shots are like. So if you're listening on the podcast, I'll try to narrate yes, what, what we're doing. <laughs> so you need just a shot glass. I, I say, Well, I mean, you could put it in any glass, but a shot glass is more convenient and more fun and you need 35 milliliters of water and a lot of people put a way too much water that was i used to be guilty (laughs) like yell at me like what are you doing like stop you're gonna waste the lipospheric the liposomes think of the liposomes she's like what are you talking about (laughs) but if you put um just 35 milliliters of water in a shot glass or in a regular glass and then pour in this yeah it's like gel gel, um orange gel into the shot glass shot glass and try to really get everything in the shot glass because yeah you don't want to waste and this is some powerful and and these these packets are 1000 milligrams each exactly so now this is our 2000 milligrams i already had one yes can't have too much right now. Okay, I'm totally so if you're watching, made mine messy. Mine's mine a little messy. So if you're watching, kind of looks like a sea urchin. Yeah, it does. <laughs> on the bottom of the glass. Way to say that as I'm about to drink it, like a sea urchin. <laughs> well, that's just appetizing. But now that you and said it, you I'll just, never be able to get that image out of my head. It's just interesting, but I love this stuff. Yes, don't so, mix it in, guys. Let it like look like a sea urchin at the bottom of the glass. And then you just exactly. shoot it like Steph used to shoot tequila shots. Oh, you didn't take shots? Not tequila. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I did, but then, ugh, yeah. Anyways, that's another story. Throw it back. Yeah, Cheers. you throw it back. Cheers to good health and healing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you're not supposed to really taste it if you throw it back further. I don't enough. really taste it. That's because you're like really good. Uh, taking shots (laughs) 
if you get any on your tongue, you might taste a bit of bitterness. Uh, otherwise, you don't taste anything. But I used to take this. Like, I'm not even just taking this because of the coronavirus. I've been taking this, like, for years now. Right, Steph? Yes. Like, yeah. Because yeah, I introduced like, it to you. At the, uh, yeah, when we were in Miami last year, I remember we were started taking it. So yeah. um, even when I started getting, like, a bit of, like, a sore throat, you know, when the common cold starts coming around? I would take a lipospheric vitamin C and it, it would go away. And then I knew I wasn't crazy because I know my boyfriend would start getting that <clears throat> common cold as well. And he would I would give him one of mine and he would be fine too. So something's definitely going on there. Yes. And now we've been taking two and they actually, because of everything going on, they yeah. sold out really quickly. Yep. It's Live On Labs, L-I-V-O-N-L-A-B-S dot com. Yes. Um. Yep, live on laboratories. They sold out, but I think they're restocking this week. So hopefully you guys will be able to get your get hands some. on some. But that's yeah. definitely our go-to for and our vitamin C. The best one right now out there. Oh, like yeah. My 100%. naturopath said it. Um, so many people have confirmed this yeah. is the best way to take your vitamin C. So we've been doing that. I've been making like concoctions just in the morning, like obviously being rationable with food right now. I've just been taking like whatever I have, no specific recipe, but taking ginger and honey and lemon and citrus and oregano oil is really great. Yes. Um, it's very potent. Um, so just Spicy. put like, yeah, it's really hot, but it'll knock some virus out of you yep <laughs> so just boil it down I've just been making these tonics I've been drinking medical medium um says that time is really antiviral nice so I've been kind of just drinking a bottle of lemon and thyme every day been using mushroom elixirs from yep. four sigmatic yep. um so just really you know like buckling down and all of these things that I already have in my cabinet that I'm not using every single day I'm starting to use or double up on so Very definitely just giving my body in addition to like you said rest everything that it needs you know every defense it can have to combat virus yeah I've cancer. been making a lot of um yeah especially that's a bonus the can <laughs> healing the cancer becomes you know the bonus out of all this Exactly. But I've been boiling a lot of fresh ginger tea. Yes. And ginger yeah. is so, it's huge antiviral, antioxidant, but it's delicious. I love every anything. Just put ginger in everything. But I also started making um, lemon, ginger, and turmeric shots. Yeah. Yeah. So I have those shots, and that's kind of like the um, oregano oil where it's like. It's spicy, it's hot, but you, you can really feel like everything Powerful. clear up. Um, and even just eating vegetables and fruits that you know are immune boosting. Um, a lot of butternut squash is high in vitamin C and minerals. Um, so because it's still chilly out here, I love gravitating towards my butternut squash because it's a warming veggie and I can make it into soups and curries and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, you mentioned everything else. Um, it's the same. Water, lots of oh, lots hydrate. Lots of water. Yeah, they, they were saying too, right? That like even if you came into contact with it, like if you drink an adequate amount of water, you can possibly flush it. So flush just it. yeah, water, water, water. Keep stay hydrated. Another thing that I've been doing, I put on my story was um, using essential oils. So mm -hmm. um, there's an oil called Thieves Oil. T H I E V E S. And it basically is an oil. I think it's like clove, citrus. But anyhow, back in the days when the bubonic plague was happening or what they called the Black Death, people were dying, huge populations. And the, the legend has it these thieves would go around looting and steal from these dying people and they didn't get the plague. So when they got caught, they were being tried, and in exchange for, you know, being hanged or whatever they did, um, they had to give up their, you know, what what were they doing to defy this plague? And it was basically they 
were merchants that made spices and oils, and they made this concoction that was preventing them from getting the bubonic plague. So that's why it's called Thieves Oil, because they were the thieves. But um, I use a brand, I really like Young Living, but I've been just putting some on my wrist, behind my ears, and also burning it in the diffuser throughout the house. So yes, and and all of the obvious things, right? Like we're wiping down surfaces, cleaning doorknobs, sage, candles. sage, sage, sage yes. is huge. Yes. And there's recent studies and research that have shown that sage, burning sage, and smudging sage around your home can kill about ninety eight percent of bacteria in the air. So if you can sage daily, it's great. And not only does it eliminate bacteria in the air, but um, spirit, the spiritual people, shamans, and um, even people back in the days use it to clear energies, right? Yes. So yes. like I said, that heavy energy that like is in yes. the air right now that I feel potently, uh, can. I, that's why I sage a lot to even just – clear the negative energy and the fear and the anxiety as well as cleansing the air yeah um, yeah I mean I think just you know do your do your research like find you know and use what's in your cabinets yeah like oh like um, we have so another much one stuff. I wanted to say as because I, I know that's what I was thinking I was like what's the other essential oil it's uh, Ravensara and Ravensara yes mm-hmm, you put me on to that huge anti micro feel is that how you call it mm-hmm. antiviral and um my acupuncturist is the one who told me to do that daily uh just because she knew I was neutropenic I am neutropenic meaning my neutrophils are lower than normal making me more susceptible to viruses hence why guys another PSA <laughs> social distancing is important to keep people yes. like us safe please yes So she told me daily to put it under the soles of my feet um, every morning, every night, and that um, the essential oil will help just boost your immunity as well. So that's another one. Awesome. Yeah, no, I think there's so many things, but just use what you have, you know, do your research. But I think above all remedies is just your faith, you know, Mm -hmm. stay Stay connected to God, to source, yeah. and just, you know, just like we always say, like with treatment, like the greatest treatment you could take is there's nothing better or bigger, I should say, than your faith. And you really need to just cling on to your faith during these times. Yeah. And, and yeah, I think, I think that if we follow, you know, and your practices don't have to be our practices, but stick to a regimen that you create for yourself and we'll be able to pull through this. Absolutely. And I I love what you said where I too believe that unfortunately it probably will get worse before it gets better. But when it gets better, I think it's going to be better than ever. Oh, yeah. Better days, um, I think, for the world. Beautiful examples is just what's happening in Italy at the moment. And I actually Mm -hmm. went to Venice with V and obviously it's such a beautiful city in Italy um, where the whole city is like though it's, it's instead of streets it's canals and water mm-hmm. and I even did the gondola ride it was really romantic but the water was the best it was kind of like murky nasty river Rainy. water and um, after just one week of shutting down Venice and Italy Um, the water was clear super clear you could see the fishies and not only that swans came and so like like iconic bridges that were filled with swans beneath and then even a visit from dolphins appeared so awesome that's just like a big message as like as to say that i think the world almost needed this break that wouldn't happen otherwise or we were all probably doomed you know i think we were headed in the wrong direction and this is forcing us this is a big like you know yeah mother nature was like nope we're going this way if you want me to survive we're going this way um home i one of my friends on instagram he was showing like the back of his house he kind of lives in the hills and he was just saying wow i haven't seen the sky this clear in so long and i'm from the valley and LA and we have a lot of smog like we're kind of like this pit of smog 
and it's sad sometimes you can't even like see the mountains in front of you because of the pollution and yeah. it was just blue skies and so that was like wow so just they're saying like even within this short amount of time with all the people off the roads and out of the cars and out of the airplanes like the carbon blueprint for the planet's already changing so wow and just a silver week, linings imagine. right yeah exactly so so silver linings and we just have to hold on to that always look for the good always look for the silver linings stay connected to your faith and stay home <laughs> yes exactly and I, I just had like, this realization where you know even watching radical remission the di- docuseries um happening right now but all radical remission survivors and even us we all we've we've changed right like something tragic and unexpected and life-threatening came to our life and that is cancer and then we had to realize that you know our we, we were what we were somewhat, doing wasn't yeah, working exactly what we were doing wasn't working and we had to change and all radical remission survivors did something to realize that they had to change their lifestyle because clearly if cancer was welcomed into their lifestyle in the past then going back to that lifestyle wasn't going to help them and so they accepted it and they made changes and I feel like this is an opportunity for humanity to realize yes. that what we were doing wasn't working so to make these Absolutely. changes and I hope that yes like what you said just being mindful of our resources being mindful that we're not you know invincible and it's so important to take care of our health and take more breaks and um, realize what we're doing to the earth realize what we're doing towards others and even little things like you know it's so socially accepted to still go to work when you're sneezing and coughing and to have kleenex all over your desk and then you know your your colleague comes to see you and it's like hey yeah i just have a cold like if you have a cold stay home and exactly employers should support that and give sick days for those um who so that they can stay home and recover right they don't feel guilty guilty for taking care of themselves and it's kind of beautiful to see also the world come together and be generous and um a lot of works are shutting down um a lot of a lot of employers are not but try to focus on the positive but a lot of um companies are shutting down but still paying their employees a lot of landlords are giving um breaks in terms of more mortgages and rent um there's a lot going on well at least in canada i don't know how things are in the state. yeah i'm like <laughs> <laughs> that's another thing like, i'll let you take the mic because no, no. Well, i mean they're, what's they're going on that what so what's but... new york doing i'd like to compare um, new york and montreal yeah a little. you guys so canada, like, US. i'll just say it like you guys are like ahead of the curve usually like in terms of a lot of things but i don't want to get too political but um mm-hmm. Yeah, like we're shutting things down, but it's interesting that here in New Rochelle, like in the heart of where the virus kind of took off, like our schools, like were the last to shut down on our end of the town. It's like, okay, the NBA shut down, baseball shut down, theater shut down, but the school right in the heart of where the outbreak is happening is open. So um, there's just been a lot of like, you know, I don't know poor calls but I think overall like I hope that everyone can put their political things aside as this is a bipartisan issue and come together to really figure things out together yeah. which I think is kind of like what's happening too it's not about you know Democrat or Republican it's about let's do what's right for the people to protect and save all of our lives mm-hmm. um so yeah it's just kind of chaotic sometimes watching the news and Anyway, I don't want to go there, but no, um, of course. <laughs> but I do feel like um, you guys have, you guys have like more, I don't know, like peace, I guess. Well, yeah, I think unfortunately, again, you have to learn from people's mistakes, you know. So I know right. that Canada, um, although people are saying it took a while, we are taking preventative measures, and we have all schools and shopping malls um, closed until May first. That was just announced. So no bars, no malls, uh, restaurants, everything's closed till May 1st, with the exception of like, you know, providing delivery and takeout. But yeah, there's no there's no school till May 1st. But who knows if it's probably going to be till the end of the year. But I think it's important that like 
we we learn from each other and i think it's yeah. it's beautiful to, that we have this global community yes but like even us with thrivers around the world and for us to be able to advocate about this and just we're all we're all in this together so yes. it's not about what country it's not about what political view it's about how can we stop this as a community yep amen so yeah lots of lots of uncertainty but right just like anything else we'll we'll get through this yes. and yeah a lot of love a lot of healing taking place that's another good point is everything that we mentioned like talk speaking of the first step being a shift in perspective is do everything out of love for others mm -hmm. for the vulnerable for the elderly for those with pre-existing conditions but especially for your family and for you don't be taking all these concoctions because you're so scared of the virus and it's gonna come get you so you're gonna take a shot of lipospheric vitamin c because ah you're so scared do it because like we've been doing it way before the coronavirus and it's because we want to support our bodies because our bodies are resilient and, our and they're supporting us exactly are working for us and i think that's um going to boost your immunity that that thought alone will help you more than anything else it's true yeah. so maybe in future episodes you know we don't know where this boat is taking us yeah. but maybe we'll have to circle back and have another episode or talk about current events or what's going on in the world but for now I think this is a good start as we enter into this uncharted territory, right? Yeah. The unknown. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. But there's so much you can do for yourself. And we hope that we were able to inspire you and make you yes. feel at ease. We'll do our best to, you know, keep pushing the content for you. Maybe Steph and I can go live so we can chat with you. Yeah, exactly. Have a little communication, community, uh, just you know, to keep all of our spirits in check right now. And yeah, look out yeah. for each other. I think we could have easily mentioned that. Um, I think we're both FaceTiming our families at all times, but give mm -hmm. someone a call. Um, Who may be can. alone. Exactly. Check up on your friends, check up on your family, um, check up on especially the cancer community. This I know it could be a very triggering time for for us we acknowledge that as well so now's the time to be there for each other there that's the beauty of social media this is where yeah. social media is act was built for this is where i can picture mark zuckerberg being like this is why i created exactly a social network yeah amen so we hope you got some good information from our episode and that you can apply these practices at home or find your own routine that works for you um and if you know somebody who kids who's having a really hard time you know navigating through all of this uncertainty please share our episode with them we're on all major podcast platforms and subscribe to our newsletter it's www.thethriversguide.com so we'll email you every week with an update about our new podcast or episode that's coming out and just um if you could rate and review us that would be amazing um yeah and hang in there yes because where there's a thriver's will there's a thriver's way everything's gonna be all right Amen. everyone yes we love you we love you talk to you next week bye bye